Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a little different this preseason. We changed some things up. We know we got a lot of uh, experience this year, and just managing the guys with a strategic plan to really have our best performance come March. But we got a really good experienced group, exciting um, whole whole team in in general. I think the talent level this year is. I want to say we have ten returning NCAA qualifiers, so. That brings a lot of good experience in the room day to day and really good leadership as as Trent was talking about it. So we'll start with Noah and then we'll go to Jesse and then yeah. Coach, your program has been very successful for several years now. How do you battle complacency and make sure that that doesn't creep into your uh, team? Um, I think it starts from the top and that's something that I'll, I'll never be comfortable with. Um, we came here, obviously, to compete at an elite level and to win at the highest level. The ultimate goal has always been to win a national title, and we haven't done that yet. So I know our coaching staff remains hungry, and we continue to embrace that with the guys that are out there competing for us. And I think you see that, that um, every guy is trying their hardest to continue to improve and you know compete at the highest level. And I think every guy that you talk to, you know, that's been here long enough, knows the ultimate goal for them is to win an NCAA title. And I think that's what every 10, 10 guys who start for us have those expectations. Coach, um, you were talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, your, your training regimen and keeping that um, level high with the number of, uh, you know, qualifiers coming back. Uh, how much with that unique situation, do you let those guys – um, kind of dictate or influence your your preseason, your practice before you guys really start the season here in terms of, you know, input and uh, leadership roles or or how you guys are flowing through practice? Yeah, you know, I think the important thing is we get a lot of guys that want to continue their career in the sport of wrestling, whether it's post-college or actually get into coaching. And then you got guys who study the sport as much as we do. And I think that makes for a, a dangerous combination. You know, you get a guy like Camacho. I mean, he's doing all the legwork he needs to do on his end to make sure that he has peak performance, whether that's uh, monitoring his his heart rate when he's day to day and, and kind of some intense training that he does on his own. He's studying all the exercise physiology. And then, you know, Trent talked about it a little bit. You know, these, these guys are have been in the sport as long as anyone and they know what needs to be done to win a national title. And we just got to keep getting better to, to do that and put these guys in place. But yeah, we, we re require a lot of feedback from our guys and uh, we let them kind of have some say in what we're doing, you know, a, a little bit of it is how you're feeling day to day. I mean, let's, let's face it. Wrestling is a very hard sport on the body and we know our guys train really hard. So we want to make sure they're feeling their best every day that they're out there competing. Uh, yeah, Pop. So, uh, you know, going into this year, uh, you know, it, it's uh, it was surprising news to hear that Alex Faison was returning as, uh, you know, he had gone through all the senior, uh, you know, ceremonies and was expect that he would go ahead, uh, you know, on, move on with, uh, you know, from his college career. So uh, wh what was kind of some of the decisions by Alex deciding to return and uh, be honest with me, uh, how much of that Makai Lewis match where, you know, he was that close to, to pulling off that upset, you know, kind of maybe kept that a little bit more of that fire in him going into the off season. Um, I think, you know, one thing you get with Faison, he's a locker room guy, you know, guys respect him on the team. I think he's a, a huge asset to, you know, our, our culture and the leadership that he brings. And I think we're, we were just seeing him start to really improve in his career. And so we didn't want to leave anything off the table. And it was a conversation that we had at the end of the year, um, asking him to come back for his, his sixth year. Cause he's a workhorse. He's, he's in the room. He brings a lot of intensity to the room and he was signed up. Uh, he signed his papers to go post military ROTC to the next phase of his training. And that's something, you know, we worked with uh, our AD to help us get that push back for a year. It wasn't an easy challenge, but uh, we got it done and excited to have him back. Uh, go ahead, Rob. 
Yeah, it's sort of a two-parter. Uh, I was wondering what type of message you give young men when you're recruiting them in high school. What do you look for uh, from young men it, that, that makes them sort of the quality that, that, that you think they can prosper at NC State? And what is sort of the sales pitch or the, the pitch that you give them to try to get them to come? Um, you know, I think one, past athletes have kind of helped us sell our program, you know, our accomplishments that we've been able to – whether it's a team or individuals, you know, I think that's one of the selling points that we have when we're recruiting kids, but ultimately trying to find guys that are, that are extremely disciplined and have that maturity level to want to know what it takes off the mat to win an NCAA title. Cause we, we do come across a lot of talent, but it's hard to find the guys that will embrace the discipline that, that we want out of our athletes. And that's a, it's a year round commitment. It's 24 seven. It's, their diet, it's their sleep, it's their study habits. You know, one thing we, we do a really good job with our, our program is not adding outside stress. You know, you, you're a student athlete here first, and sometimes school is, is a challenge, and we don't ever want to be kind of in a hole when it comes to the academic side of things. So our guys do a phenomenal job keeping up with their grades and, and our model citizens here in the community. And I think that's important as we – try to continue to, to build and brand our, our fan base. People get behind that and, and know that you're just dealing with a great quality human being across the board if, you, if you're wearing an NC State singlet. When you uh, teach a young man something, it could be a, a wrestling move or just a life lesson or whatever, and you see that manifest itself into success for that person, describe that feeling. I, I think that's why you get into coaching. You know, you want to see professional growth you know, one, obviously, I, I know the ultimate goal is for us to to continue to be competitive and win. But when you're developing, you know, kids from the age 18 to 22, I think that's a critical time in, in someone's life. And we got to be the people that set the standard a lot of times. You know, parents are giving away their kids for us. They're away from home. And we got to make sure we manage them and, and come through on our promise. And it's, you know, it's a fine balance between love and accountability. You know, it's it's not an easy task to to guide 35 guys on our roster. You know, you only see 10 of them out there competing, but we have 35 that we give everyone the same amount of love. So at times it's it's challenging when you only have four coaches and, and it's really a lifestyle for us as, as coaches. But, you know, when you, when you do see a kid become an All-American or a national champ and, and know the adversity that they've dealt with, uh, growing up in their in their high school career, you know, we got a team full of guys that have overcome a lot of adversity. I think you talked to Kai earlier. His story is rather unique, and it's just uh, it's the ultimate feeling of why you get into coaching. And then from last thing for me, sir, uh, you, obviously you've raised the stakes at NC State in regards to wrestling. It's, it's vastly different. Where is the growth potential this season and going forward? What are some of the, uh, the, the, the I guess, the heights you would like to see NC State maybe get to? Yeah, you know, I think we've been close before to have multiple guys win national titles. You know, you, the one year Mock and Hayden were in the national finals. But I think when we can start producing multiple national champs, that that will be a, a huge impact on, on a lot of different levels for us as a program. Uh, I think this year, you know, we, we've got eight guys right now that are anywhere between you know, top eight in the country across the board. So that leaves a, a lot of opportunities for us to to go out and, and make some real noise this year and, and really compete, you know, to continue to to compete for those uh, team trophies at the NCAA tournament. And that's, that's really all our focus is going to be this year. And I know we have some really tough duels, but we're, we're here to make sure that we have our best performance come March. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you. So we'll go uh, Noah T and then Jesse. Uh, Coach, could you talk a little bit about Owen Treffen, who really came on last year, a little bit about how he's improved this offseason and also just what he does really well as a wrestler? Yeah, I, I think the one thing we saw with him was the maturity um, off the mat. You know, when it, when it comes to a heavyweight, there's a lot, a lot of different uh, variables that come into that. And I think your diet that you – you can, again, you're not, a lot of the guys are, are managing their weight to kind of drop down. And as a heavyweight, it's a unique situation because you can ultimately put some size and muscle on. 
And that's a fine balance of doing that with a heavyweight because you also want to keep your speed and, and power. It's not just, hey, I'm going to put on 10 or 15 pounds. You've got to do it the right way. And I think that's one of the things that we've, we've seen Owen do in last year and going into this year, you know, um, not being content on where you're at. I think that's a huge thing. And, you know, we've, we've had to make sure across the board that we're pushing our guys. And, and I think that's something for him. He's good enough to compete with the best guys in the country and he's shown it. We just have to do it back to back matches now when we get to the national tournament, but yeah, yeah he's going to be, uh, he's, he's a real athletic heavyweight. He's a smart kid. And, you know, I, I think he's got all the tools that he needs now to, to go out and, and accomplish his goals this year. Coach, with all the changes we're seeing happening in the collegiate landscape in terms of athletics from you know, all the different sports, like what what impact do you think that's going to have on the ACC and um, you got the future of the ACC going forward? I think it's positive. You know, the more competitive that we can get as a conference, I think the the more it will help us when we get into recruiting. Um, let's face it, we're we're all dealing with a lot of changes um, as coaches, so we have to adjust and adapt and I think as a as a sport here at NC State and the fan base we have, we need more support than ever. Um, if we want to stay competitive and relevant, we need our fan base to really get behind us. And I think we know what we're talking about when it comes to that. And I know there are certain things we can and can't say, but if we want to continue to attract the best recruits, you know, our fan base has to support us and the other entities that are behind college athletics right now. Go ahead, Noah. Yeah, you kind of touched on it earlier, but how have you kind of seen Kai just grow, you know, ever since he's, you know, been on campus and through his, you know, career at NC State? Yeah, I think he came in here, you know, as as a, as a kid. And, you know, we watched him as as coaches become a man. And I think our, our fan base did the same thing. When you saw him compete, he was, you know, inconsistent a lot with his diet and managing his weight, Trent. Trent hit on it a little bit. He really did a great job towards the end of the year being super disciplined. Um, he's a big 33 pounder. So it requires a lot of discipline outside the room. And I think he's, he's found the right people in his life that he surrounded himself with. And I think it's had a positive impact. Um, again, what we do isn't easy and you can get negative and you can get down on yourself when things aren't going right. And that's one thing Kai has done a great job with is, battling through the adversity and the growth that you need to go through as this, you know, as a wrestler, when you're, when you're improving, um, he's had a roller coaster first couple of years. He had good wins, but some losses that you know, maybe shouldn't have happened and never dwelled on it. And I think we saw him wrestle his best um, in the month of March. Yeah. And then what's it like for you to see Trent, you know, in his last year here, move up and, and kind of, you know, make an opportunity at, at 197 now. Yeah, I mean, he's been a rock star for this program. His obviously his wrestling ability is one thing, but the leadership that he instills with this team and and kind of bleeds into the other guys on the team, you can't put a price tag to that. And that's probably been the biggest thing for us is, you know, having him here for six years, you can't help. If you're in that room and you see a guy like that, he's very vocal in a positive way. And our guys kind of feed on that, you know, some sometimes you know, it might be a little hard for guys to hear, but he's he's always true and, and stays uh, the course to his core values. And, and that's been contagious with the other guys on our team. And, uh, you know, the one thing I like with him is, is he hit on it. He wants to make sure the leadership stays intact when he's gone. You know, I think his brother did the same thing for us. He was a great leader and guys learn from him. And I think that's going to help us in the years to come because, guy like Jackson Arrington sees that, knows what it takes to, to lead a team. And as you get a little more experience in your time here, you know that you got to step up. Kai's doing it now. Um, it just, it becomes contagious. And, you know, they're, they're kind of like a coach on staff behind the scenes for us. They're, they're, their words are just in, as impactful as ours as coaches. All right, Landon, you want to close this out? Yeah, Pop, uh, you know, I, I think one of the last biggest questions I've heard a lot of, uh, you know, going into the season is what's going to happen at the 125 with both Camacho and Trombley. 
um, you know, being both uh, AC champions within their own right. And, uh, you know, obviously with Kai and S. Guy and those guys right there above you, there's, you know, not really much room, it seems like, you know, for them to fit in the starting lineup. So what's what's kind of the, the thought process heading into the season with both those guys? Well, good news is we'll have a lot of depth down low. So, you know, if we have to manage a guy um, in the way that our schedule is, I, I, I foresee some – different faces in our lineup through different times of the year. Um, you know, those guys have a lot of miles on them, both three, all three of them do. So we can kind of play our cards week to week, but I, I plan to get every guy matches. Um, we, we've got some really good options and, you know, sometimes rest and recovery is going to be a good thing for a guy that, you know, is a hundred percent healthy and, and might need a little bit of a break. And I think that's, I think we're starting to see that trend a little bit more. You got to get the right matches in and you got to be ready for March. And we're going to be able to do that. You know, if we're wrestling a team and we want to put Trombley up at 33, we can, we can definitely play with our lineup a little bit, but I, I would envision all three of them getting the same amount of matches this year as, as we go through the season. And lastly to, well, you kind of mentioned on it about, uh, you know, the, the fan support and, uh, you know, one of the biggest things, which I know is that, you know, with the upgrades, finally with the locker room, uh, you know, kind of talk to me in terms of what has been the uh, feedback from recruits, you know, on the upgrades. And then, you know, what is their feedback on, you know, what uh, the home environment, you know, makes impact wise on the recruits in terms of comparing it to the other national brands uh, in terms of home, home, home field advantage or home court advantage. Yeah, I mean, let's face it. If you're ever in a pool meet in Reynolds, you know it's a it's a wild and a, and a great atmosphere. So I think that that plays a huge role. Kids want to wrestle in front of a crowd. They want to know that there's support, you know, not just from the student body and the administration, but also the local community. And I think that's a that's a huge factor right now where we're at, being in Raleigh and the, and the fan base that we have and the landscape of college athletics. You know, we we need to tap into that as a resource for the things that are, are happening behind the scenes and just sports in general. So I think that's a critical part into our recruiting. And, you know, I, I'm going to challenge our fans more than ever now to get behind this program. So we, we stay where we're at and continue to grow to ultimately compete. I know NC state fans are, are pretty passionate and expect uh, teams to, to win at an elite level. So we're always up for that challenge and, yeah, it's, it's been it's been a positive for us when we're on the recruiting trail. People people recognize that NC State fans are passionate. 